So our first headline, this is an important one, from the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity, big holes in the COVID spike narrative. Motor motorcycle accidents ruled COVID deaths in the rush to paint Florida as the epicenter of the second wave of the coronavirus outbreak. Government officials and their allies in the mainstream media have stooped to ridiculous depths to maximize the death count. A television station this weekend looked into two highly unusual COVID deaths among victims in their 20s. And when they asked about comorbidities, they were told one victim had none because his COVID death came in the form of a fatal motorcycle accident. Sadly, this is not an isolated incident. In fact, the spike that has dominated the mainstream for the last couple of weeks is full of examples of such trickery. Washington State last week revised its COVID death numbers downward when it was revealed that anyone who passed away for any reason whatsoever who also had coronavirus was listed as a COVID-19 death, even if the cause of death had nothing to do with COVID-19. And I, I got to say, thank you, Dr. Paul, for this just matter of fact explanation of what I've been ranting about for weeks since we got these first reports of false COVID death, since we've had this obvious manipulation of the data used to justify violation of individual rights. And I, I really get sick of pointing this out, but it's worth reminding people that 86.59348792513 of all statistics are total made up bullshit designed to manipulate you. And none of them even justify, in this case, the policy that they're advocating for with this. Oh, well, because of these statistics, uh, we should steal $1,000 from you if you don't wear a mask in public. And if it wasn't enough to, to see that the, the numbers themselves are nonsense, if, if you can't look at this intellectually the way that Ron Paul does and, and, and say, well, you know, we, we understand that this is nonsense. Just look at the people who are telling you this. Let's go to Breitbart.com for a second. Critics taunt Dr. Anthony Fauci for watching baseball game without a mask. And, it, you know, this is this is funny. Breitbart kind of, you know, burying the lead here. It's not that he's getting taunted. Like, that's not the story here. The story is that he went and sat there with his mask around his chin, laughing, sitting next to two people with masks. I mean, like, what is this? Hey, Dr. Fauci. You're giving those grandmas COVID and you're killing them because you're not wearing your mask properly and you're not distancing around other people. And you went and you throw out the fr now, This is so funny. Now, think, uh, Dr. Fauci was invited by the Nationals to throw out the first pitch before the National Yankees game, where, by the way, every single player kneeled before the National Anthem and there were no fans allowed. And now, by the way, Fox Sports is going to fill empty baseball stadiums with virtual fans. This is where this is all going. It's not just that we're being bullied and pushed into hazmat suit world where like, hey, if you want to come out and do anything, you got to wear a mask and, and wear a hazmat suit. They're actually trying to get people to shift their lifestyles to just be at home all the time. See, there you go, empty stadium seats. And yet, if you look at the online, uh, you know, the, the, the announcement from... Fox Sports, they're going to have virtual, but yeah, now Jim is laughing because you're, what, you watch the actual pitch? <laughs> yeah. Like, if, if you're, I mean, yeah, it's funny. You know, it's a fun tradition to throw out the first pitch. If you're, if you're going to embarrass yourself, stay home. But, you know, and I'm not, I'm not here to make, okay, okay Jim's laughing. Like, Jim, you really shouldn't laugh at Dr. Fauci or make fun of him because he's an idiot who doesn't know his own physical body's capabilities and can't, you know, get, get like, yeah, the pitch was embarrassing. But no, what should we be making fun of him for? That he's revealing himself as an absurd hypocrite. And, you know, it's not just the, you know, implications for the, the rest of America. You know, let's, let's go jumping ahead to, to MSN.com from the New York Times. Trump abruptly cancels a Republican convention in Jacksonville. It's not the right time. 
Bowing to threats posed by the coronavirus, President Trump reversed course on Thursday and canceled the portion of the Republican National Convention to be held in Jacksonville, Florida, just weeks after he moved the event from North Carolina because state officials wanted the party to take health precautions there. Bowing to threats posed by the coronavirus. No, bowing to public pressure, bowing to the mainstream media. I mean, this is this is your president, all you Trumpa Loompas. Bowing to the press. Like, oh, yes, we support Trump because he pisses off the liberals. And then he licks their boots and does exactly what they say. Walks right into their coronaphobia trap instead of resisting it. Oh, I can declare a national state of emergency and have press conferences every day. People will listen to me and think I'm cool again. Oh, and then Trump is revealed to be the idiot here because he has fallen for Dr. Fauci's propaganda. And I think this is, you know, this is a trap that the Democrats set for the Republicans or set for Trump, right? And he walked right into it. So back to the, the, the Fauci first pitch story, right? He was invited by the nationals to throw out the first pitch to recognize this is from breitbart the team invited dr fauci to recognize his efforts in fighting the coronavirus pandemic which significantly shortened the baseball season and threatened to cancel it altogether you know and i tried to think of a metaphor to or an analogy to help understand this but it's like Hey, Dr. Fauci, because you're doing such a good job helping everybody fight the coronavirus, let's invite you to do something contrary to your advice that we're praising you for. You know, I, I guess, I mean, it's kind of like inviting an anti-masturbation activist to a circle jerk and then seeing them enthusiastically participate. Hey, you're doing such a good job stopping people from jerking off. You want to jerk off on this cookie with us and then we're all going to eat it? Like, yeah, really? Like, I mean, I could get more graphic and gross with this, but none of what I could possibly come up with as a metaphor would capture how disgusting the present reality we are experiencing is because of hypocrites like Dr. Anthony Fauci now revealing himself un unqualifyingly, unquestionably as a hypocrite who doesn't believe his own bullshit. Back to Ron Paul here. In South Carolina, the state health agency admitted that the spike in COVID deaths was only the result of delayed reporting of suspected COVID deaths. An analysis reported daily COVID deaths last week compared to actual day of death in Houston revealed that the recent spike consisted largely of deaths that occurred in April through June. Why delay reporting until now? Ron Paul so benignly asks in his, I am not doing the Ron Paul voice. We do know that based on this spike, the Democrat mayor of Houston canceled the convention of the Texas Republican Party. Mission accomplished? Yeah, mission accomplished. Exactly, Dr. Paul. This is why they're doing all of this. And I, you know, this is where like, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so again. Where, what did I say, Jim, about, do you know what I'm talking about here? You know, which I told you so. I told you that the, once we, once we let them use statistics like this as the excuse to violate individual rights, and I, I, they're going to do it again and again and again, how long are they going to get away with it with Corona? I don't know, but this means they could use it for the next crisis, the next funky off season flu. That's a normal occurrence in the global human family petri dish doesn't it seem suspicious that so many states have experienced delayed reporting of deaths until fauci and his gang of experts announced that we are in a new nightmare scenario last week in florida which is perhaps not coincidentally the location of the republican party's national convention another scandal emerged when hundreds of covid test centers reported 100 percent positive results Obviously, this would paint a far grimmer picture of the resurgence of the virus. Orlando Health, for example, reported a positivity rate of 98%, a shocking level. But a further investigation revealed a true positivity rate of only 9.4%. Those anomalies were repeated throughout the state. Cases once meant individuals who displayed sufficient symptoms to be treated in medical facilities, but when the scaremongers needed a second wave, they began reporting any positive test result as a COVID case 
No wonder we have a spike. Politics demands that politicians be seen doing something rather than doing nothing, even if that something is more harmful than nothing at all. That is why Washington is so addicted to sanctions. And you think, okay, now Ron Paul is going to, whoa, wait, sanctions? Hey, why are you bringing sanctions into this? Well, it makes perfect sense for Ron Paul to bring this in as an example, for which I will bring in another example, 9-11 and the global war of terror. Regardless of what you thought happened on 9-11, and all we can really say for certain is that the government story is absolute nonsense, it still didn't justify invading Iraq and Afghanistan and occupying those countries for decades. Right? And they got, this is, it's shocking. That government can't fabricate even better excuses for what they're like. Hey, there's a virus that's a threat. Well, first of all, it's not any kind of special threat. It's not. And, and, and while you're debating that, they're going, well, so how much of an excuse can we use this? Uh, or how much bad policy can we use this as an excuse for to violate your rights to enrich our sponsors to keep the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor and us in government getting more powerful? Well, I mean, it's the same thing. They use these excuses for sanctions, right? Well, there's this problem. Well, we're going to do something about sanctions. Don't make anything better. It's stealing from the poorest of people who are going to pay the brunt of the taxes, which sanctions represent, or just completely cutting off trade, as sometimes sanctions are with embargoes, which is basically say that you can't have trade between countries. That's an act of war. You are physically interfering with individuals' right to trade freely. And even now, with the, the trade war escalating between the United States and China, well, it looks like they're doing something. What is the result of this? The rich get rich, the poor get poor. Who pays for these tariffs in the trade war? They get passed on to consumers. It's not the rich who are paying for the cost of statism. They are profiting from it, however. Same as with the coronavirus. The same has been said, excuse me, the same has been true, especially in Republican controlled states in the U.S. in response to the coronavirus, based with a virus that has killed about one third as many people as the normal seasonal flu virus in 2018. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has endorsed a partial shutdown of the economy, resulting in millions tossed into the despair of unemployment. Then he arbitrarily shut down bars because massively increased testing showed more people have been exposed to the virus. And he mandated that people wear face masks, neither shutting down bars instead of restaurants or Walmarts, nor forcing people to wear masks will have any effect on the progression of the virus through society. But at least he looks like he's doing something. We are facing the greatest assault on our civil liberties in our lifetimes. The virus is real, but the government reaction is political and totalitarian. As it fall, falls apart, Will more Americans start fighting for their liberty? I hope so. And I think as I would be asking everybody today, if government doesn't follow its own rules, why should I have to? If the hypocrisy is laid so bare, why should I have any faith in the system whatsoever? And the answer is you shouldn't. You should have faith in yourself and freedom and your family, your loved ones, your communities and other people who are willing to stand up and do the right thing in the face of this ridiculous adversity that has now bullied most Americans into thinking that they have to wear their own slave muzzle just to go out and interact with their fellow Americans. It is a sad state of affairs we have fallen into. And as Ron Paul called it, the coronavirus hoax. I don't think that is an exaggeration at all. And now we see just another phase of the hoax with this spike in deaths, spike in cases with the second wave used to justify a second wave of tyranny that will last far longer than this virus.